Welcome to Lone Crow Adventures, the channel where we talk about all things camping, hiking, and backpacking. If it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button. There is a ton of content on this channel I know you'll enjoy. Today, we're talking instant pop-up tents. Love them or hate them? Let's find out. I've been camping for about 20 years and I have never personally used a pop-up tent. I've seen them used on family campgrounds and I've always thought they looked kind of hokey and I always approach them with a little bit of apprehension. So when a company approached me asking me to review their pop-up tent, I was a little bit weary about it because I don't have a lot of experience with it, but I thought, hey, let's give it a go. I know I do go on a lot of road trips where I'll have five or six pack up and setups within one week. So having a tent that just springs into existence could be a really good option for some of these trips where I'm doing car camping and I just need to throw up a shelter real quick. So we're going to be looking at the Aimea instant pop up tent and this is a four to six person capacity tent. I am not sure how I feel about it right now. I'm a little bit apprehensive just because I am more of a traditional tent kind of girl. So we'll see if the Insta Tent can win me over. So this is the Insta Tent. This is a pretty big, big disc. I am uh, five foot two, so my arm span's not that big. So it's, uh, it's definitely a big disc. Something that you definitely want to use for car camping. Now, I haven't even opened this up, so we're, we're experiencing this together for the first time. Alright, so let's see what we've got. Roller on out. So it looks like we have a little compression bag here, and there's some guy ropes, and pretty typical standard round aluminum tent pegs that are in there. I'm not sure how many are in there. We'll find out in a few minutes. We'll move this over here. Now from what I've read about this tent that what I've seen is that you can just take this elastic off. Alright. And you're supposed to be able to kind of throw it in the air and, and it literally throw it in the air and it will set itself up so let's see that seems a little less than instant doesn't it okay maybe it just needs to be coaxed a little okay here we go I mean, it, it could be camera shy, you know? Okay, so I think this is the top. Oh, this must be the side. seem very instant so far this uh see and this is why i've always been scared of trying these tents is this the bottom of the tent oh well it could be user error Okay, that's looking a little bit more, a, a little bit more instant. You know, it kind of looks like one of those, you know, wind tunnel test tubes things that you're going to see at like Area 51. Um, initial thoughts. You can fit six people in this tent. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll tie it down and we'll see. I don't know. Ugh. 
Maybe we'll spin her around so we have the door at the front. Well, let's, uh, I don't think there's any instructions in here. What a mess. Okay. We have lots of guy ropes. And we have... Now, one of the things that I'm kind of concerned about with this Instatent, it's not staked down or anything, but you can see there's no points on the tent where the poles cross. And that's what I've always been worried about these tents is that it's basically based on a looping system that arches over, but none of them actually cross. And we've got about 15 to 20 mile an hour winds here. So if those winds kick up, I'm really worried at, at the wind resistance that just the design of this type of tent because uh, it's going to be able to offer. These are the, the tent pegs that it came with. Let's see, it came with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve tent pegs. And these are those super cheap aluminum pegs that you're going to really have to be careful with when you push them into the ground that you don't bend them. Um, and these pegs, this style, if you're familiar with them, they don't offer a lot of wind resistance either. They Because they're, they're round, if the wind kicks up, whoop, they just pull right out of the ground. So um, right off the hop, I'm thinking high wind situation, prairie grassland camping, probably not going to be the kind of tent you want to go with. But we'll finish getting her set up and staked down, and then we'll check back in and give you guys an update on the Insta tent. Now, if somebody owns one of these tents, or one of these same style tents. If I'm doing this incorrectly, leave a message in the comments below because there was no instructions that came with how to put this Insta tent up or how to use the, the guy ropes. Now, I'm actually gonna make a change here. I think if we crisscross these, we'll get a little bit more wind resistance. The beams kind of crisscross at the bottom, but nothing crisscrosses at the top. And with the wind, you can hear the wind in the background. That's making me a little nervous, so. Just a real easy peasy knot over there. We got this one tied up. We'll kind of do the same thing over here. There. That way we just have another anchor point here. Now, when I do any kind of uh, guy rope work, I take these little plastic clips off. It doesn't matter what kind of tent it is, what brand. I think they're totally stupid and annoying, and I think they get in the way. So I just get rid of them right from the start. So this is the final suspension that I decided to go with for the AMAF pop-up tent. I ran the line up through the front two loops, and then I tied it off and staked it here in a triangular design to pull the front of the tent forward and then in the middle I've tied to the top and the bottom and then I've crisscrossed these here to get the tent to kind of pull inward and apply opposite pressure and then again pulling outward at the end hopefully to provide the maximum amount of wind and rain resistance with this setup. Like I said, if you guys own this tent or you own a tent that's similar to this, leave notes in the comments below of how you do your guy rope work because I'm really unsure about this. I think this is the setup that's gonna work the best, but if you guys can think of something better, let me know in those comments below. All right, let's check out the front vestibule. Now this tent only does have one entry in and out and it's on the front. So we have a rain fly. And this rain fly has a double zipper, one on each side here, and then you would roll this up. And we have a hook up here. And you can see these zippers operate really nice and smoothly. So here we have the front vestibule 
Now the vestibule does have a removable mat on the bottom, but it's nice that you can put your gear out here and it's not going to get wet and there's nothing going to soak up through the bottom of here. So that's kind of a nice feature. One feature that I could see being difficult to use is the zipper system on the front in the event that there's rain. You'd have to reach forward here, unzip this first fly, and then all of the rainwater as you pull this aside is going to come and drip right down inside of this vestibule. And you would have to hold it up like this and then get out that way versus a tent that has the zipper coming down the middle where it comes down the middle and then you flip it outwards in which case you would be sending the water flying outwards with this one because it zips on the side you have to flip like this with this point being up here instead of in the middle I'm, I'm worried that you're going to get some drippage into the vestibule small detail but a significant detail at the same time all right so this is me inside the tent i i'm sure i could sleep either direction i could sleep with my sleep pad in this direction here and sleep maybe two other people with sleep pads next to me or what i think would be the better way is to orient sleep pads in this direction in which case you you probably could fit three sleep pads maybe four, four tops, because you're gonna wanna sleep this way inside of the tent, because in the middle of the night, if you have to get up to go to the bathroom, you would just get up off of your, your tent pad, and then the only exit is right here, versus if you sleep the other direction, then you have to crawl over people to get to the exit. So that's how I would orient the sleep pads, is in this direction here. We have a window on both the left and the right side, so you can open up this mesh window here, open up this exterior window here, and there are zippers that you can get to right while you're inside the tent. And you can open up that outside flap, and then you can roll it up which is kind of hard to do from inside the tent. But you can roll it up and you can see right up here, you can um, pin that right to the top. I personally would probably go on the outside of the tent to do this. It's really awkward to reach through while you're on the inside. But I mean, if you need some snacks or you need somebody to hand you something, you don't want to go through the front vestibule, that's kind of a nice option. So let's give an update on the waterproofness of the AMA pop-up tent. As you can see here, my bag that was in the vestibule has gotten wet. And if we look up at the top here, so here's my hand. Look at that. It's just pouring off. So the vestibule is definitely not waterproof. And if you come over here to the side, what concerns me is that this is made out of the same material. So I'll dry my hand off again. Hands dry. I'm going to come across here. And it's wet again. It's not dripping to the same extent as the vestibule, but I have never had a tent. This is supposed to be this is supposed to be a rain fly. I've never had a tent just water pouring on the inside. And it didn't even really rain last night. There was a light sprinkle and then there's some fog this morning. So I think if you were to use this tent in actual rain, you would be totally soaked update on the tent look down this is a $200 down sleeping bag that has been soaked by this tent leaking on it you see 
the water is pooled at the top and you can see it's coming through and dripping. It didn't even really rain here. It was foggy. There was a minuscule amount of mist and some dew dripping from the trees. So this tent is not a waterproof tent by any means at all. This tent just totally bombed in the raining right now. My stuff gets wet. You're going to start ruining my expensive gear? I don't think so. So let's talk about the AMA pop-up tent. This morning when I woke up, I was prepared to give this tent a 3 out of 5 crow rating. That was before I started taking a look around at my gear. My sleeping bag was wet. My pack was wet in the vestibule. It didn't even really rain here. There was a very light drizzle. There was some fog and most of it was just dew dripping off of the trees. The fact that you're going to market a tent as waterproof that can't stand up to dew and fog makes it an automatic dead crow rating. There is no circumstance under which I would recommend that you spend $150 on a tent that's going to leak in very, very light rain. Absolutely not. The other big problem that I had with this tent was the entrance. There's only one entrance, which that's kind of annoying, but you have to unzip three separate zippers to get out of the tent. And when you're trying to get out, you're on the vestibule, you're on your hands and knees, and you're leaning forward. You have to lean all the way forward and zip this zipper up. And then immediately all that water starts to come, come in, all that condensation, everything starts to come in and you get soaking wet trying to go to the bathroom. So that's just a poor design on, on that matter. Now, if, if you were gonna purchase this tent, really the only use that I could see for it would be if it's the summertime, You've got totally clear conditions, no chance of any dew, no chance of any rain. And maybe it's like grandma and grandpa wants to throw up a quick pop-up tent at the trailer because the grandkids are coming to stay for the weekend. That I could see being a use for this tent, but anybody who is a serious wilderness person would never consider using this tent. So take that in mind when you, when you consider if this product's gonna work for you. I know it's not gonna work for me. And unfortunately, it's the first Dead Crow rating that we've had on the channel. Thanks for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that you learned something new. Now is the time, if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. And while you're here, you may as well check out a few of my other videos. Until next time, folks, we'll see you on the trail.